Today we're going to be taking a look at the Air Jordan 5 What The. I'm excited to talk about these because there are a lot of shoes mixed into this one shoe right here. So let's go ahead and get into the video. Welcome back to the channel. What's up with you guys? How you doing? How you been? If you did not know by now, my name is DJ and this is the DNA Show. Hey! Now if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification for every time I upload a new video, and don't forget to hit the like button because that helps the algorithm oh so much. So let's go ahead and get into the shoe. Originally this shoe was supposed to release on November 7th, my birthday. I was so excited and so ready for these to come out. But then they decided to push the shoe back to November 12th. So we still have a couple days until this shoe comes out, but I am still excited and ready to get these in my hand. This pair in particular was purchased on early access. This is my homie's pair. He let me get my hands on them so I could give you guys a review. I still need to find a size 13, so hopefully I can get my pair on release date. Starting with the box, we have our classic Air Jordan 5 box. Big red Jumpman right here, black lid, flip top, and cement print all around the box. The size label reads Air Jordan 5 Retro SE Varsity Maze Solar Orange. Retail, 220 bucks. Opening up the box, we have a new... They've been going with this paper a little bit more often on these newer retros. We got a white cement print paper right here, and then we got the shoe. Oh, we got the shoe. So before we get into this review right here, I want to show you the initial four shoes per shoe that this shoe came from. So we have four shoes for the left foot and four shoes for the right foot. Starting with the left foot, we have the Green Bean Air Jordan 5, the Raging Bull Air Jordan 5, the Quai 54 5, and the Shanghai 5. On the right foot, we have the Bel Air Air Jordan 5, the Laser Air Jordan 5, the Olive Air Jordan 5, and the Tokyo Air Jordan 5. Throughout my years of collecting sneakers, I have owned six of those eight pairs of shoes, and I think that may just be one reason why I want these so bad. Two shoes that I have personally never owned before are the Tokyo 5s and the Quiet 54 5s. I still would love to have those in my collection, but the Tokyo 5s are just way too much right now, and personally, I just don't see myself spending 10K on that shoe. So to have a chance to buy at least one half of it, I ain't mad at it. So now that you know where these shoes originally came from and how they got the inspiration behind these, let's go ahead and start diving into these shoes. Starting with the right foot, you have your classic Bel Air Air Jordan 5 outsole. Going up to the midsole, you have a continuous Bel Air Air Jordan 5 midsole. Going to the upper, as you can see, all yellow upper Tokyo 5 vibes. You got your Tokyo 23 hit here on the back of the foot, just like the Tokyo 5. Man, I love that shoe and I'm so excited to see them on these right here. Looking at the heel of the foot, you have your classic Air Jordan Jumpman logo here on the back. Looking at the sock liner, this is the same sock liner from the Laser Air Jordan 5 and then the tongue also is from the Olive Air Jordan 5. Looking at the laces, you have all black laces with the black bib right here. Super clean, super simple. Now looking at the left foot, we have a Quad 54 outsole and the same midsole as well. Those both match and are identical. Going to the upper, they switched it up just a little bit on us. They gave us a Raging Bull 5 upper with the material. Honestly, it's not like the original Raging Bull 5. I would say it's a little bit lower in quality, but I ain't mad at it, but I wish it would have been a little bit nicer like the old pair. Looking at the touch on the back right here, you have the Shanghai logo. So on the left foot, they decided to go with Bel Air vibes as well with the retro sock liner here on the inside. And then you have a green bean Air Jordan 5 tongue right here with the lime green on the back and then the green pull tab right here man bro i remember the green b fives from back in high school bruh if those things didn't crease those would have been diamonds in the rough it was tough to rock them because of the creasing with the material but bruh i used to love having those so now let's talk about numbers longevity realisticness of just rocking this shoe having it in your collection all those different things when it comes to first impression i'm not mad at it i like it i love it just because of the nostalgia behind all the other shoes that i've seen and had from the past to see them come to this and come to life is kind of dope but it is kind of weird to see that they didn't do actually any og colorways and typically on the what does they tend to to do OG colorways. So for them mixing it up with retro plus colorways and different stuff like that, I ain't mad at it. It's something different and I think it's cool. I think we had more of the OG vibe when it comes to the top three Air Jordan 5 and I think a lot of people can relate to me when I say that. That shoe takes iconic models that were classics and put that into there and this one takes more of the retro plus colorways but I have also heard a lot of people say this is something mainly for kids like you would let a kid wear this shoe and maybe if you were a collector you probably wouldn't rock it but you would hold it in your collection as kind of like a trophy item or something like that. And I think this kind of falls in that category. I, it's gonna be hard for me to rock 
the ketchup and mustard vibes, and I don't know how I'm gonna put them on my feet, but I would like to have them in my collection, simply from the nostalgia from high school and all the different shoes that I used to have back in the day, to now being able to see them all come into one and create this wild, funky colorway. And I think it will grow on people over time, but initially right now, it is kind of tough to stick, but at the same time, the shoe's still worth $250 to $290. That may be because it's an early release, retail's 220, so you might be able to make a couple bucks, but if you're looking at the long longevity i think a lot of people are going to appreciate this shoe some years from now you know maybe three or five years from now and it's going to have a crazy value like yo you remember when they dropped the what the fives and like wow i can't believe i still got a ds pair type thing i think that's going to be one of those type of situations so if you can buy these try to get them for retail or try to get them for under retail try to get a good price i wouldn't go out personally and try to spend that maximum amount of money on a shoe like this just because i know you probably could find it for a good deal in your local market so as of right now i'm hearing that they're going to be available at a lot of retailers so you shouldn't have a problem getting them if you put a little bit of effort in if you enter into a couple raffles i don't think it should be that big of a problem now everybody always has their complaints with sneakers app i'm gonna make my efforts on sneakers app as well but i might put a couple other calls in just so i can make sure i can secure myself a pair so now here's the question is this shoe fire or is this shoe trash i always post that poll on my instagram if you haven't already make sure you follow me on ig so you can participate in the poll as well the results are always posted here on the channel so this is what the people said 63 percent of the people said fire and 37 percent of the people said trash i can completely understand why this is i wouldn't say close to 50 50 but it's a lot heavier with the you know people on two different sides type of thing typically we see like that you know 90 to 10 or something like that or 85 to 15 but i do understand where people are coming from it, everybody's not gonna like these and i understand that me personally i would have picked fire just for the reasons like I said earlier in the video. And for me, it's a cop, but I don't wanna spend extra money for a shoe like this. So if I have to be patient and I don't get it on release day and I get it later down the line for maybe like 230 or 240 bucks, I'm willing to pay that price, but I don't see myself paying anywhere near $300 plus for this shoe you know maybe a couple years from now this shoe might be hidden for four hundred dollars or 450 or or 350 that does make sense you know time from now but it's going to take a long time before this shoe starts to go up in value unless some crazy miraculous thing happens and then these things just pop out of nowhere and everybody loves them and they all got to have them but if you look at top three ones and what the fours and and stuff like that you realize over time they start to go up they're a little funky at first but then you give it some time and next thing you know they're worth some money so those are my overall impressions shout out to my bro for letting me borrow these for the video i hope you guys enjoyed this wish me luck on release date i need to get a size 13 in my collection i appreciate you guys for always tuning in i'm gonna see you guys in the next one Yo, if you enjoyed this video and you want to make extra money or grow your shoe collection, I want to give you a free video with my three tips that were the most powerful that will help you grow your sneaker collection and make an additional $1,000 to $10,000 a month. All you need to do to get this free video is click on the first link in the description or the comment that's pinned in the comment section. That'll take you to a page where you can enter your email address and I'll make sure that I send you a video right away. And if you enjoyed this video, again, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. My name is DJ. I'm signing out. I gots to go. I'm gone. Peace.